I'm writing a paper about community engagement right now, how the work of rhetoric and composition intersects with broader publics outside the university. And it's reminding me how little of my composing process is in actually individually constructed, either materially or mentally. The idea that composing is a networked communal activity is by no means original, and yet communal composing processes still don't seem to get quite as much attention as individual ones in scholarship. As I compose, I am myself being composed by my connections to others and by my experiences of the world, what Paul Pryor would call the laminated chronotopes that make up who I am and what I want to achieve. See, I could pretend that this is all there is to my composing process, that it's just a set of disembodied hands typing things that come out of my brain. But the truth is that my composing is constructed on the backs of others, on daily, hourly sacrifices made by my husband, my family, my friends, Sacrifices of time and resources that are deeply networked, that reach into the things I write about and change who I am and what I want my writing to do in the world. The material realities of my com individual composing process right now are built around long days and nights um, spent typing, around Sundays spent cooking, cleaning, and talking with my family to try and maintain some balance in my schedule, around getting up early on Sundays to write in coffee shops while my husband gets our son ready for church around getting my son and myself ready in the morning during the week, dropping him off and spending nine uninterrupted hours on campus mentoring, teaching, and discussing ideas to get home at night and figure out when I'm going to write. And make no mistake, I love this life. My husband and I chose, together, to have a son and to maintain relationships with my nuclear and extended family, and to devote our lives to teaching, writing, and learning. And we're gifted for that work. We really want to help people. But I think it would be a mistake for me to pretend that I am the only one who goes into my composing process. My brain, my pen, my keyboard. In fact, there are so many people involved in my writing now that I have trouble naming them all. Sometimes I drive all the way back home so my mom can watch my son while I type. And then we get time to talk, to catch up, to go for walks. A wonderful lady I know from my community group cares for both my son and her own children while I go to campus. My on-campus friends are willing to take video footage of me eating sandwiches or let me do my laundry at their house when my dryer breaks. Workplace colleagues have offered me space to pump milk. My husband watches our son for extra hours so I can get my writing done. This year, more than ever before, I've realized that community, the people and experiences that compose me, um, makes up a huge part of what I do, both in the field and in my personal life. I won't pretend that the latest exciting theoretical development can take the place of getting a full night's sleep for four years, or that I never get frustrated by the dual privileges of raising a child and getting a PhD. But what this year has made me realize is that my writing is built on moments with others, raking leaves, talking with my husband, sharing stories with the family and friends that surround me, watching my son learn about how objects roll. It's moments like these when I feel I have the most to write, and the most reason to write. What would I compose without the experiences and relationships that compose me? I love my place in academia. I love every corner of it. I love that we explore those who are excluded by the academy, that we privilege the writing of many voices, and that we love the written composed word. But so much of what I write is built out of a sense of community, not only in the academy but outside it as well. The idea that my scholarship might be able to work for the good of everyone around me. The very things that brought me here to this field are also the things that make me a whole person. All these experiences then, all these relationships, are the things that create what I compose.